start our uh, unit on curve sketching here, we're going to take a look at a couple of topics that you covered um, earlier on, either in uh, this earlier in this course or in uh, the previous course, Advanced Functions. So we're going to take a look at asthmatopes, and by the end of this lesson, we want to be able to find the horizontal and vertical asthmatopes of a rational function. And we are also going to take what we did in the last unit on intervals of increase and decrease and apply this to functions that not only have local maxima or minima, but also have a vertical asymptotes. And the tool we're going to be using there again is the first derivative test. So we're just going to take a look at a single example of a rational function here. So what we want to be able to do is for the function f at x equals x squared over x squared minus 4, first we want to be able to find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. So for the horizontal asymptote, remember what does a horizontal asymptote tell us? It gives us the behavior of the function for very, very large or very, very small values of x. So as x tends to positive or negative infinity. And we looked at this back in unit uh, 9, 10 when we were working with limits. We, what we wanted to evaluate was we wanted to evaluate the limit as x tends to positive or negative infinity of our function. And the value of that limit would be, would tell us what our horizontal asymptote was. And we had to use a special technique for evaluating these limits. So I've written plus minus infinity. Um, I'm just going to change that to just positive infinity in this case. We had to use a special technique to evaluate limits like this. We divided every term in our function by the highest power of x. So divide by... highest power. So we took our function, our limit, and we rewrote this as the limit as x tends to infinity of x squared over x squared, because x squared was our highest power, x squared over x squared down in the denominator, and then 4 over x squared. And then we could immediately simplify this a little bit to get the limit as x tends to infinity of x squared divided by x squared is just 1. The denominator, x squared divided by x squared is 1 again. And this term, 4 divided by x squared, says stays the same. And you'll remember we talked about what happens as x tends to infinity or as x becomes very, very large. A term like x equals 1 here is not going to change because it's just a constant. And that's what a constant means, that it's not going to change. A term like 1 down here isn't going to change either. But this term, 4 over x squared, as x becomes larger and larger and larger, you're dividing that 4 by a larger and larger number. Um, and so if you take a small number or a number that's staying constant, divide it by a very, very large number, you're going to get something that is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So that limit, the limit of that term, is going to tend towards 0. And all of those terms that we can express as a constant divided by some power of x are going to tend to 0 as we take our limit as x goes, tends to positive infinity or to negative infinity. So what are we going to, so this limit here is going to be equal to 1 divided by 1 minus 0, which is just 1 over 1, or just 1. So our horizontal asymptote the equation of our horizontal asymptote is the function y equals 1. And you always want to give the equation. So that's our horizontal asymptote. Now, vertical asymptotes, you probably remember from advanced functions. We had a method for finding vertical asymptotes for a rational function we would uh, set the denominator equal to 0. And then we would solve for x. And this would give us the x values for our vertical asymptotes. Because our vertical asymptotes are places where our function is undefined. So if we're dividing by 0, in, uh, if that denominator equals 0, we're dividing by 0, that's going to give us a function that is undefined. So 
if our function here is f at x equals x squared divided by x squared minus 4, to find our vertical asymptote, we're going to take our denominator, x squared minus 4, and set it equal to 0. And we can solve this by factoring. It's the difference of squares. It factors to x minus 2, x plus 2, which gives us uh, the two solutions that we have here, x equals positive 2, x equals negative 2, are going to be the equations of our vertical asymptotes. Okay. So, horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes. Now, we want to combine what we've just done with asymptotes to what we had done in the previous unit with intervals of increase and decrease. So working with this same function, now we want to find the intervals of increase and decrease here. So in the last unit we saw that the first thing we wanted to do was we wanted to find our critical numbers. And what were our critical numbers? Well, there were two conditions for critical numbers. Our derivative, f primed at x was equal to 0. And the second one, which we didn't use a lot, but our derivative did not exist. And we didn't use that one a lot because we were working with polynomial functions for the most part. And polynomial functions, uh, their derivatives exist anywhere on their domain. In this unit, we're going to be working a lot more with rational functions. So we're going to run into these cases where our derivative does not exist. So if we're going to find our critical numbers, let's uh, find our derivative here. here. f primed at x is going to equal, I've got to use the quotient rule, so derivative of the numerator is 2x times the denominator minus my original numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which is just 2x, all divided by x squared minus 4, all squared. I'm going to work with this. I should simplify that numerator. So if I expand, I get 2x cubed minus 8x minus oh, 2x cubed. All divided by x squared minus 4, all squared. And this is good because those two 2x cubed terms in the numerator are going to cancel each other. And I'm going to be left with negative 8x all over x squared minus 4, all squared. Now, I want to find my critical numbers. So, critical numbers occur where my derivative equals 0. Okay? And this derivative expression that we have, negative 8x over x squared minus 4, all squared, that whole thing is going to equal 0 when the numerator equals 0. So let's take our numerator, negative 8x, set it equal to 0, and solve for x. Well, x equals 0. The other condition we want to explore is when our derivative does not exist. So just like when we were searching for vertical asymptotes, which represented um, locations where our function did not exist, if we're looking for places where our derivative which is just another function, does not exist, we are going to set the denominator of our derivative equal to 0. So our denominator is x squared minus 4, all squared. We set that equal to 0, and we want to solve. So x squared minus 4 equals 0 is going to equal, uh, sorry, x squared minus 4 all squared is going to equal 0 wherever x squared minus 4 equals 0, because 0 squared is just 0, 0. And then I can factor this expression, x minus 2, x plus 2, and I get solutions x equals positive and negative 2. So there are three critical numbers in total, x equals 0, x equals positive 2, and x equals negative 2. Now, we know what x equals positive and negative 2 are, because we found them in the, uh, on the previous slide. These two critical numbers are vertical asymptotes. 
In the previous unit, our critical numbers, we always hoped that they would be local maxima or local minima. But vertical asymptotes can also be critical numbers of a function because it is possible for your function to change from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing on either side of a vertical asymptote. Um, we could have a situation where our vertical asymptote is here and our function on one side of it is increasing, on the other side of it, it is decreasing. We could have a situation where, um, where that is not the case. We could have a function that is increasing on one side and is also increasing on the other side. So this is, I'll say, increasing to decreasing. This one is increasing to and still increasing over here. So we don't know what is happening. I, if we're trying to sketch the graph of our function here, something can possibly change at this vertical asymptote. So that's what makes these vertical asymptotes critical numbers. And if we're doing our interval table to find our intervals of increase and decrease, we want to use them um, to define our intervals. So our intervals are going to be from negative infinity to negative 2, from negative 2 to 0, from 0 to positive 2, and from positive 2 up to positive infinity. So we've set up our interval table the same way we did in the previous unit for in when we were looking for maximum and minimum values. What are we checking in this interval table? Well, we want to check the sign of that first derivative. So we want each term in the factored form of our first derivative to appear on the side here. Because again, we want to check what is the sign of the first derivative and what does that tell us about our function f at x. So, negative 8x. Is it going to be positive or negative in, in these intervals? Well, negative, eight, negative 8x is going to be negative where x is positive and positive where x is negative. So it is going to be positive and positive, then negative and negative. x squared minus 4 all squared. Well, because we're squaring everything in the brackets, that's going to be positive everywhere. So our derivative is going to be positive, then positive, then negative, and then negative. So our function is going to be increasing, then increasing, then decreasing, and decreasing. So looking at this chart, we can see that we've got a point here. Um, we're going to have a local max right here because it changes from increasing to decreasing at that point. Uh, we can figure out the coordinates of that, or 0, 0. And these two sort of points, critical points here and here, we know are our vertical asymptotes. So it increases, continues to increase. So it increases on one side of our vertical asymptote, continues to increase on the other side, changes to decreasing at this local maximum and the minimum, and then at our other vertical asymptote, it um, decreases until the end of its um, until the end of the domain, um, on to positive infinity. So there we have our intervals of increase and decrease.